Welcome to the next project. Today we are going to be winding a couple different coil drivers or exciter coils to be used for testing guitar pickups using software such as the Axtec Boneplot. They shared the recipe to make these, so let's take a look at that as we start the next project. All right, our ingredient list is pretty simple. An empty pickup bobbin, which we're gonna steal from an old humbucker. Some 41 to 44 gauge pickup wire, which again, we're stealing from that old humbucker pickup. A 3.5 millimeter or quarter inch TRS cable, which is tip ring sleeve cable. Some tape and or shrink tubing. I'm using tape because I didn't have the right size shrink tubing to cover the whole thing. And also we're gonna need a couple alligator clips and a mono cable, but that's not for the coil driver itself. That's another part of the puzzle. Now we're going to take a look at the recipe. Step one, wrap 100 to 200 winds of 41 to 44 gauge pickup wire onto an empty pickup bobbin. Simple enough. Step two, apply tape to the winding for protection. Step three, solder the tip and sleeve leads of the TRS cable to the start and finish winding lead of the bobbin. Step four, wrap the TRS cable to the bobbin and add wrap of tape or shrink tubing to the bobbin to hold it all together. Pretty simple. And now I'm gonna harvest some parts out of an old humbucker, probably out of a Harley Benton kit or something similar to that. Take the screws out of the, uh, well, wherever you can take screws out of, take them out, just take them all out. Then the bobbin will peel loose from the Bottom backing plate, snip a couple wires, fumble around, try to get that protective tape off of the coil. And now we're ready to steal some wine. Oh no, we're not. We gotta pull some slugs out of this one. Eh, simple enough. Um, so we're gonna set this up. And honestly, to be, if you weren't doing a demo like this, screw your bob into something a little board like that and set it on the floor, stand over it, and the wire will come off of it pretty well. I was almost too close to the bobbin to unwind it like this. And this is a wax potted bobbin, but barely. You can see some flakes of wax there. I unrolled, unraveled, unwrapped about 400 winds roughly of wire. Wasn't really sure how much I was gonna need. It all came off pretty good though. I'm cutting away the excess windings off of the bobbin. And you can see, once again, there's not a lot of wax holding this pickup together. So even though it was wax potted, it was kind of barely wax potted. The wire is all coming off pretty neatly, which is nice. Some pickup bobbins that you may have or use or see will be smooth on both sides. This particular uh, pickup bobbin had little standoffs on it, which actually helped to hold the magnet in place and also gives it a little bit of a chase for where the wires are supposed to go, even though the wires weren't running through the notches that are in the bottom. I cleaned it up really good, tried to smooth out um, any rough spots, get rid of as much wax as I could. And then I attached the bobbin to the end of a little board, so I had a handle, basically. Here we go, we've got my custom wire holder and a tennis shoe that is, uh, well, I guess that's my custom wire holder holder. I just had a little piece of tape holding it together so it wouldn't just unravel everywhere. And I start winding. And I did three different coil uh, drivers. I did a 200 wind coil driver, 150 wind coil driver, and 125 wind coil driver. Just to test to see if they really will make any difference when I'm doing my bode plot scans. We'll get to that in just a bit. But anyway, just wrap, 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 wrap. And, you know, you can decide what the target number you're after when you start wrapping. But my findings, as we will see in a little bit, uh, I'm not gonna give it away. Stay tuned. So this is 150 winds on a bobbin and you can still actually kind of see through it and see the bobbin itself. Barely a full layer. Here I've used the bobbin to measure the width of a piece of masking tape. 
just slicing off a little piece of masking tape and using it to protect the windings that I just put on there. This pickup wire is like the thickness of a human hair. So it's really thin, easy to damage. So you have to be careful when you're wrapping your tape on it even. I have the, the bobbin screwed to that little board handle and my wires were actually taped to the handle. So if that bobbin spins, it will snap the wire off. Be warned, yes, that does happen. Taking a little bit of 500 grit sandpaper and gently sanding the uh, insulation away from the edges of the wire. Here I am quickly testing a TRS cable, which is tip ring sleeve. I'm trying to determine which wire goes to what part of the plug. And I only need two. I need the tip and the sleeve, not the ring. So I determined I need the red and the black lead in the cable. And I wrap one end of the uh, pickup coil wire to one of the cable lead wires and the other end of the, the coil wire to the other lead. And it doesn't matter. Start or stop on this doesn't matter. Just uh, the start can go to one of the lead wires and the end can go to the other lead wire. Uh, a little bit of solder takes almost none and get it on there. Uh, get rid of any extra little wire that's left hanging out. I did put a little piece of um, shrink tubing over the end. Probably not necessary because we are covering this with tape, but just so, you know, goofy me doesn't accidentally break it. And yes, it is pretty easy to break at this point still, so you have to be careful. Go slow. You know, maybe be prepared to do this two or three times because if you've never messed with pickup wire before, it's pretty delicate. Now I've got the uh, TRS cable soldered to the pickup winding wire and now I've cut a little piece of electrical tape and I'm putting that on to help hold everything down into place. Again, fumbling around a little bit. We've got the TRS cable soldered to the pickup windings and also wrapped around the bobbin just to help make sure everything stays tight and doesn't accidentally get pulled loose. You could use some shrink tubing to cover the whole thing at this point, if you have that big of shrink tubing. I do not. So I'm using some two inch wide, I think it is, masking tape, just to wrap around. Again, this is some protection for everything that we've just done. Kind of pretty simple. Now it's about time for testing. Using an LRC multimeter, test your driver coil for resistance, which is ohms, and inductance, which is millihenries. You will need these values when using the Xtech Bode Plot software. I made three test driver coils and took note of all the measurements that I'll need for this test. Quickly looking at how we hook up our coil driver to a Focusrite Scarlet in this case which is then hooked to our computer. And our computer, in this case, will be running Axtech mode plot software. Setting up the Axtech coil driver based on the specs that came with that coil driver when I purchased it. Tabbing through the minimum max frequencies, the gain and volume, just to make sure everything is set. Start the generator and start the sweep. And this is actual speed, so it goes pretty fast. In this instance, I am running a, a scan on a Strat single coil pickup. If you run some scans and they come out really rough and jaggedy, you probably need to adjust your minimum maximum frequency, your gain and volume. Run a few tests to make sure you get nice smooth looking scans. Also, if you let a scan uh, go through two or three times, it will generally smooth out the scan as well. We have given our first scan, which is the Axtech coil driver, given it a name. Also put in the parameters, the Ohm and millihenry readings in the name. Tab through and 
plugged in the numbers for our first test coil that we've made, which is the 200 wind coil. It was 177 ohms and I think 1.4 millihenry. Tabbed through all the settings to make sure it's set within the uh, software. Ran the scan, now I'm giving it a name, calling it 200 wind and the parameters of the, the coil itself. Plugging in the numbers for our third scan, which is our second coil driver that we wound, which is the 150 wind coil. Again, tabbing through all the parameters to make sure everything is set. And then I'll be hitting a start swipe and it will be going into the third channel. The swipe shows up in red, but it will be saved in this case as a white trace when we're all done. However, white trace is below the uh, cyan and the green trace, so we really don't see it, but they're stacking up so well. I'm getting a good feel that all of these coil drivers are really pretty much spot on. The only difference we're seeing is at the very end, the tail end of the scan, but that's okay. What we're really interested in is kind of the peak, the lead up and fall off of the peak to know where it is, how high it is, and where it's happening. So overall, these coils are all pretty even, which is a nice surprise, actually. So after we've run all of our sweeps and scans and bode plots, we can save it all out individually or batch export the whole thing and open it in Excel as a CSV file. We can then turn our unique scans, our exported file, into spaghetti charts and create a database of loose pickups. Say you're a pickup winder and you want to catalog your progress, what you're doing. This is a great way to do it. You can also do individual pickups you have laying around, maybe under the bed or in your guitars, whatever you choose. I want to thank everybody for hanging out with me. I also want to thank Axtech for sharing the information to create coil drivers with us. It's really pretty simple. I think just about anybody will be able to do it. I uh, need a little bit of wire and a bobbin and a little bit of patience soldering gun, I guess, too. You can do it. Thank you for hanging with me through this video. I greatly appreciate it. Hopefully you found something kind of interesting or useful. Please take care of yourself and those around you. Till next time.